Hi, it's Paris from Epic Reviews the Home Channel, and today I'm reviewing this, the iBoss Home Parental Control Router. Now, if you have kids in your house, you've probably taken some steps to try to keep them away from the bad parts of the internet, and it's really a, a piecemeal way of doing things, I found, because I know, because I have all these pieces around that I have in my mind of things that I've tried, especially when your kids get to be teenagers. That you can go into Windows, you can change settings, Internet Explorer, content filtering. You can go into um, the, the router that you have now and set IP addresses to only work from this hour to this hour. Set up filtering rules so this IP address can't do this type of application. You, uh, if you want to know what's going on, you can get uh, like N Nanny software to put on the computer. But then you got to pay for that again every year. And then there's the phone, which uh, bypasses a lot of those protections. So now the phone, you've got to get something like a Phone Sheriff, which goes in and monitors what goes on there. So you end up with all these pieces of your security program and all the expenses, um, especially of those software programs, they're all yearly. None of them you can just buy one year and be done with it. So I've decided to try a different approach because I've had mixed results with that and just trouble keeping up with it. Probably one of the main things, at least the kids' complaints, which ends up being my complaint, is that um, the, the programs tend to block within a category sort of indiscriminately. So th something they'll allow they're not interested in, but this thing that seems to be about the same that they really want to be able to do, it blocks and then you've got to go and log in and try to create an exception. Anyway, I'm going to try to do it all in one place with one device, and that's what this is for. Um, I've read mostly good reviews about it. Um, what it does, uh, for some people, depends how you want to set it up, is it will replace your router. In my case, it's going to be added on to my router. So my router in um, my bedroom, which plugs in via cable to my computer, that's going to stay the same. And there's still going to be a Wi-Fi network that my wife and I use with our phones and laptops. My kids are only three years apart in age, and so pretty much the the, the Top two-thirds of worst stuff, I'd like to just have it filtered for anyone who accesses the internet through this device. And then to allow the bottom third. There are lots of options I understand you can go through and very specifically choose websites and programs and file type extensions to allow or disallow. And I don't really want to go through and do all that. So I'm going to find out if that's what I have to do. What I've read though is that I can basically just set, take a default setting and say that's it. If you're allowed to get to that website, well then that's great. If not, hey. You know, it's not me, it's the box. And also to uh, program in the time so that at 8 o'clock p.m., that's it, the internet turns off. It's not, you know, go and shout, I'm going to unplug the thing. Oh, wait, I need five more minutes. Or, oh, wait, I've just got to finish this thing. And then you forget, and then it's 8.30, and hey, what are you still doing on the internet? So, at 8 o'clock, it goes off. They know it goes off. And hey, I didn't do it, the box did it. So, that's the approach I'm looking for. Um, let me open it up, see what's in here. Then I'll plug it in. The way you program it for whatever settings you want is via a computer. You get onto the network that this creates and then you go in and program it. Let's start with what's inside the box. Now the best way to get this I think is to order it online. I've never actually seen it in a store like Best Buy or Fry's or anything so I'm not sure why. And there's, there's two components basically. There's the hardware component which is going to be the router and then there's the licensing software component, which happens more on their end, the, the iBoss end, their end, and their server. And that you have to pay for separately. So um, you have to be aware of that going into it, that this is about 50 bucks to buy. If you, when you, to get the really 99% of the benefit of it, because you can still use it as a plane router, but to get all the filtering and all of that, the benefit of that, you have to pay a yearly, I don't know, $55 or something, for the licensing and then that is go they are going to charge you that each year if you don't pay it then it goes back to just being a plain router that lets everything go in and out if you want to take a look at it online i'll put a link right down below in the description and um i'll check more once i get this set up and set up my account with them and everything if there's some coupon code or something like that i'll put that down there too but here's what we get in the box simple little router with uh, everything labeled on top as to where you plug things and what they do, you don't usually see that on routers. And it's got four ports in the back, so you could plug four computers directly into this. So this antenna will screw on here. Over here is where the transformer plugs in. And then an extra Ethernet cable if you need that to plug it into your router or into the wall. Okay, I've plugged it in, and it was a simple matter of simply plug it into power. And since I'm running it off of my main router, I just plugged it into the iBoss. 
I came to my laptop, brought up the wireless networks, and I now see it there, iBoss. Is I do see the network, so I'm going to join the network now, and um, then I go to myiboss.com, and that should take me to the page where I can see what I can do next, including purchasing the year subscription. This is the page I came to. I joined the network. Uh, it said you may need additional login information. Click here, and I did, and boom, it comes right up to the iBoss main page. Now it says right here that I've got to activate it um, before it'll actually do anything, but I can go through and look at the settings. So again, to activate it, it involves going online to the company. Uh, you have to purchase a license, then you have to activate a license, and then I think at that point you're good to go and it'll provide you a year of that uh, doing it stuff. I just wanted to show you briefly here what they offer on the front page. <clears throat> Log reports, they'll keep track of everything that happens on the network, people trying to get to places they shouldn't. Um, the internet controls, other preferences like the, um, the password for it, which I think is more than a preference. I was kind of surprised too that at least when you started it up, it, the first thing it didn't say was, hey, you need to put in a password, but you actually have to go through and do that. You have to know to do that on your own. Identify computers and users because you can block and filter and set the time for individual computers as well as individual users and um, check for updates on the firmware to reprogram it any improvements that have been made to it and then find out about your subscription when it expires purchase an additional year and so forth now the interesting things that i saw were under internet controls i saw this and i thought oh man i gotta go through and do all this block website categories allow specific websites block specific ports blah 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 well i am um, if you aren't doing this per computer, it's not quite as onerous. Like I'll go to block website categories and then they show you all these different categories, ads, adult content, tobacco, art, auction. Who wants the block from auctions? People who I guess have a auction addiction. Anyway, there's kind of funny some of the categories like real estate that you wouldn't want people to go to, but I suppose you could use this in a small business as well. This company does make um, similar device for larger organizations so they might not want people shopping for a new home or new apartment while they're you know, on company time anyway you pick what you don't want people going to and you can have it always blocked or you can block it just certain times of the day you can have it log what people try to go to this is a sneaky one the stealth mode where it doesn't block the people but it does uh, make a report a log of where they've gone and then it emails it to you so the people don't know they're being watched basically uh, this uh, safe st uh, strict safe search enforcement is really good because I've gone into the kids computers and put that out on Google that's where you want when they do an image search or something, your images, you know, there, there are images you don't want to have them see. So if you have safe search on, it will block out the worst of them anyway. And if they've either gone and turned it back off or, you have, or if it's a different um, search engine Bing or something, this will anyway make sure that the filtering that goes on is at the safe search level for any searches that they do both for websites and images and so forth. So the way this works, this basically hijacks your uh, attempt to get to the internet, sort of, and it directs it through the servers of the iBoss, I'm guessing, where where you're trying to go is analyzed, and then they decide, yes, you can, or no, you can't. Now, some of that probably happens in the router. Um, it may get updates of things that are allowed and not allowed in the different categories, but some of it, I imagine, has to go through their server. So when that happens, it probably does slow down the internet for those applications, or at least at the start of them, when it has to check if they should be considered allowed or not. Well, we've had the iBoss up and running here for about a week now, and um, it's worked pretty well. It certainly is good at uh, catching the time and turning things off right when you intend it to. For example, I'm on the, the iBoss Wi-Fi in my home right now, and when I go to go online, here's what I see. The internet is sleeping. And here, it's telling me everything's in sleep mode and so forth. Now I can, at first, when I needed to get a little more time for them here, I would um, go to this disable for a certain amount of time, and you can choose some blocks of time to disable it, but that disables the entire thing, so there's no filtering going on. And I thought, well, that's not very good. Well, it turns out you can pretty easily disable to uh, turn on just the internet but keep the filtering. You just have to pay a little attention. Where it says attention, click to review or bypass the sleep schedule. Go right here, scroll down and bypass internet sleep. If 
or two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever you select, and then the internet will be back on for any user, but it will st you'll still have all the filtering in place. So I'm going to have it bypass the sleep mode for 15 minutes, but leave the filtering on, so now we can get on the internet. And it's pretty much instantaneous when you make the change. See, now we're back online. So I've set it to block stuff that you would expect to block for preteen type kids. Um, I've also told it um, one particular word to block if it sees it, and that's chat. So if you're trying to find chat stuff, it should block that. Let's try it out here. It won't let me do a Google search for chat. Now a website may come up that has chat or something in it, like um, one that the kids like is Girls Go Games, which is a collection of different games, some of which may be okay and some of which may not. There's the website. If we go down to something like um, Kissing Games, it's not going to let me go there because that's on the list of, uh, that's not appropriate for that age group. Also the image search and the video search are set um, in Google and Bing, um, the major search engines, to safe search, which means they'll filter out explicit results. Now the pages sometimes come up a little pokey because they all have to go through the, um, the server on the iBoss end to make sure that they're where they're supposed to go. So if we type something like Coke use, Coke is Coca-Cola, Coke is also cocaine, and some of the results may come up mentioning cocaine. Now that wasn't what I typed in, but of course Yahoo and Google kind of try to figure what you might want to know about. So if I try to go to that page, it's going to block me. Now that's a WebMD page, so obviously it's informational, but it's not going to let me in there at all. Wikipedia, no. Nope. So it's going to look at the words and make its best guess. It's not going to be 100% effective in this, but um, it seems to lean on the side of blocking if it's not sure rather than letting sure, letting you through if it's not sure. So I suppose that's for the best. So after a week of trying this out, the um, iBoss Parental Control Router, I'll give it a mostly thumbs up. It, it's not perfect, doesn't block everything in the way I was hoping, but um, it's better than any of the other things I've tried in the past. Any of the other individual software programs I've had on the computer, had on the phone, um, going through uh, T-Mobile to try to get things blocked and so forth that might be accessed through the phone, all those, that piecemeal approach, this is a much better job of having it all together in one place, to having it not be software based, it's hardware, and it covers every device in the house. Everybody who connects through this has the same limitations the way I've set it up in that the internet is on from this time to this time and that's it. And that when it's on, the restrictions and the filtering take place for everything. It doesn't matter if you're connecting from the, the Wii or your phone or a tablet or your computer, the same restrictions apply into, as to the things you can get to and you can't get to. And again, for my wife and myself, we run our things off of the, the main wireless that we have, and so it's completely unaffected by this. The kids go through this connection, we go through the other connection. The, the fact that the kids are kind of frustrated now, but they're sort of settling down to, well, this is just how it's going to be, I think is a good sign. It shows it's not easy to bypass, and it is doing what it's doing. If uh, they were completely as carefree and unbothered as before, I'd figured out, I would figure they must have found some way around it. But um, I think it's working well for everyone now. There is the, of course, there's the charge for the device, and then there's the yearly charge, and that yearly charge keeps going on each year if you want the service to continue. But that's how I found the um, Net Nanny and uh, the different programs, both for the computer and that you have to have, and that you need to have on the phone if you're also going to filter those. They, they're all the same. None of them. It seems like you pay one price and you're set. Um, you've got to pay for the service, and so I think it's not unreasonable the amount that they're charging for this. Anyway, um, I have not seen this in my local stores. It was only after some searching online that it came up, so I'll put a link down below in the description bar if you want to check it out, read the other reviews about it. They're mostly positive. I mean, everybody has a few gripes about it, it seems, but in the challenging business of trying to keep your kids out of trouble online, this seems right now to be the best product you can get to do that.